James, about 48 hours ago, you were in Cyprus representing the England C team. A late night getting back last night, and here you are. How are you feeling right now? Very tired. Um, got back at 3 in the morning. Um, got the equivalent of 6, 6.15 breakfast, hour time, um, over there for the last, last few days. Obviously, double session Monday when the lads here had a day off. Um, so, yeah, very tired. When you see the players at the top level representing England and Champions League games like they have this week and the amount of travelling and so on involved in that, does it make you realise the sort of you know all the all the the surrounding elements of all those that travelling you have to do? Yeah, of course. Although I think they do get the time to climatise over there. Obviously, it's different for England C because they get their international breaks, um, and and they probably have a day off when they get back to the club. Um, but obviously, the tempo is higher as well. So there's an argument for both cases. They need they need their rest a lot more than we probably do because of, because of the high tempo that they play at. And it seems quite a while ago now since that first cap you earned for Bermuda when you scored that hat trick. You're now quite an experienced member of the England C squad. Is, is that how it feels to you? Yeah, it does. Um, for the last two or three trips, I've sort of seen new faces come in. Um, I think I've, me and Matt Pearson hold the record for the New England C with eight caps. Um, so, so, yeah, you do feel more of a senior pro. People sort of ask questions when, to, when, for, when we can get up for dinner and things like that. Um, so it's nice, yeah. And uh, you travelled with Elliot Frey, who, of course, your FGR teammate. You knew him before as an England teammate. Now he's a teammate at your own club. Is it nice to have someone that you know very personally to be able to go around with? Yeah, well, I knew him at Exeter. Um, I was with him at Exeter like six years ago, six, five, six years ago as well. Um, so I knew him before. Obviously played England C with him, had a good catch-up. And uh, he joined the club and he's, he's brilliant. He's a really nice lad and he steps his game up when he plays for England C. He play, plays brilliantly. And uh, Paul Fairclough, the England C boss, spoken very fondly of you before the trip. Is it nice to have someone who's in that position speaking of you in that way? Yeah, of course. He um, he's seen a lot of talent come through, uh, and he, like he says, there's there's ten million players he can choose, and you're the selected sixteen. Um, and it's nice to have a manager that just says, "Go out and express yourself." It it's more performance based than it is sort of results based. Obviously, we need we need results in the conference to get promoted, but it's nice to get away from all that and be able to express yourself and play with players that are all of similar age and have the same aspirations. As you know, the training ground was absolutely drenched today with the, the rainy weather. Cyprus, I'd imagine it was quite nice this time of year. Yeah, I was sending pictures to the boys, sort of 12, 15 degrees at nine in the morning. Um, and, and sort of fleet, fleet sent me one back saying just about to de-ice the car. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's lovely to get away for a few few times a year. Certainly. And, uh, you know, representing England, I'd imagine it's a feeling, but you never really lose the sort of passion for is it? Oh, there's no, nothing beats it. It doesn't matter who you line up for. Um, you grow up wanting to play for the real England team. Um, it, be it, this probably be the, the best level old player, um, England England wise. Um, so every time you put the shirt on and sing the national anthem, it, it means everything to you. And domestically, I think recently you scored the winning goal against Grimsby in a massive win for Forest Green. It was an important goal in that game and an important goal in the in the history of the club because you became the club's all time leading conference goal scorer. What's it like to have that title? Yeah, it's great. Obviously, um, I've always scored goals being a centre forward, um, all the way up to when I joined the club. Um, they put me right, right and left midfield, and I, and I continued to score goals. I'd like to think I'd have broken it earlier if I had played in my favourite position and probably best position. Um, but like I said, I, if I can keep getting in amongst the goals, then I've, I've got more tools that I can use when, I, when and if I be, can well go up in the leagues. You mentioned being played in a right and a left side of position, but also having a small spell down the centre. Um, has that sort of versatility enhanced you as a player? It has done, yeah. Um, Obviously, it's not nice being playing there for 15, 16 years and then feel like you've been dropped to, to midfield. Um, but, but now I've got two more strings to my bow. Um, I don't want to be a jack-of-all-trades master of none, but when and if I do move on, then, then I'd like to be as a centre-forward and, and prove how good I am there. And of course, Jan Krakowski had the goal-scoring record previously, which you've beaten now. I'm guessing you're wanting to extend that record so that the next person's going to have to work pretty hard to get there. Yeah, of course. Um, Records are there to be broken, but I'd like to make it hard for them to break. Um, yeah, 50, if I can get to sort of seven, eight more before the end of the season, it'd be great, and it means I would have been in the last three years. Um, so if I can do that, then obviously somebody's going to have to work quite hard to be able to break that. And when you do look at the list, there are some real you know, Forest Green favourites in there. Your Stuart Fleetwoods from his first spell, uh, your Alex Sykes's, Neil Grayson's, those sort of individuals. Is it great now to, to be not only rubbing shoulders with those, but above them? Yeah, of course. I knew Fleets at Exeter. We got on really well. Um, he took me under his wing. Um, yeah, and obviously I knew really well playing with him. So it's great to, great to know those two and know that I'm 
ahead of them in the scoring charts. Um, so I can have one over them when we go for a drink. And looking ahead to Saturday now, AFC Telford United visiting the new lawn. They're at the bottom of the table and you guys are pushing for a playoff place and on a fantastic run of form. Surely the minimum in this sort of game has to be three points, doesn't it? It has to be. Um, no bones about it. I think we're three, three or four points behind Grimsby, um, obviously with our three points off. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, yeah, and a 94th minute goal against Alfreton probably would have changed changed the game against Altrincham because we'd have won six on a spin. But it's about getting back to winning ways now. Um, so we should do that against Telford. They gave us a good game last time, but within the score we've got enough quality to win the game. Well, I suppose with that Alfreton game, it just goes to show that even if they're in the relegation zone, you still have to be really careful about the threat they possess. Yeah, everything's a battle. They're fighting for their lives, so they'll throw everything at it. Either they'll park the bus when they're defending. Um, and come at us from set pieces and chances that they will have. Um, we just got to make sure we stop that and we take advantage of it.